prisms are used in ophthalmology for a varied reasons. In this presentation, we will learn the use of prisms for various diagnostic and therapeutic purposes in ophthalmology. Prisms used in ophthalmic practice can be broadly divided into those based on their designs like loose prisms, prisms bar, trial prisms, Fresnel prisms, Riesli double prisms, Vary prisms and slab of prisms and based on their use in managing various conditions like relieving prisms, corrective prisms, over corrective prisms, inverse prisms, yoked prisms, rotating prisms and regional prisms. These are the various designs of prisms available. Prisms are incorporated into various optical instruments as well as they are used for various diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. This is the list of instruments which use prisms. A wide range of diagnostic tests can be done using prisms and we shall be discussing them in detail in the next slides. Prisms are also used for many circumstances as a temporary treatment or as a supportive and alternative treatment which we will be seeing in detail in coming slides. Loose prisms or prism bar is used for measuring angle of deviation objectively whereas a medox rod can be used to measure the deviation subjectively. This is a video showing a alternate cover test using a loose prism. Now prism adaptation test helps to calculate the amount on which a surgeon would decide to operate upon in a case of partially accommodative isotropia. In patients with partially accommodative isotropia, a base out prism is prescribed over a full hyperopic correction and patient is reviewed at every two week interval. The amount of residual isotropia is measured and prism power is increased further till on follow up the angle of deviation is stabilized. This is the final angle which the surgeon needs to operate upon. Preoperatively, prisms can be used as a guide to assess if postoperatively a patient might develop diplopia or not. This is of use more so in all patients who have a, who have a quiet type of strabismus. Alternate prism bar cover test is done and deviation is neutralized. Patient is asked if he can see single. Then prism is slightly increased by 5 to 10 prism diapters and patient is instructed to inform if diplopia returns. If during this assessment patient is not able to fuse and see single then there are chances that postoperatively also patient may complain of diplopia. Postoperatively for intractable diplopia resulting due to surgically over or under corrected squint. If patient complains of diplopia, then a prism trial can be done, done in clinic to neutralize the residual or over corrected squint and prisms can be prescribed later based on prism trial readings. We usually take more than two readings to confirm if the squint is stable. Sometimes readings need to be taken for distance as well as near. Now vertical prism test is a test used to confirm the fixation preference in non-verbal or uncooperative children with amblyopia. A 15 prism diopter base down prism is placed over fixating eye which causes both the eyes to elevate whereas there will be no movement of either eye when it is placed in front of the amblyopic eye. A double medox rod test is done to assess torsion specifically in case of acquired SO4 nerve palsies. Two cylinders on medox rod are aligned vertically so as to produce two horizontal lines. Patient with extortion will see one line straight and other line tilted. In nystagmus, abnormal head posture is often adopted to place eyes in null position. Prisms can help to place the eyes in null position thereby abolishing abnormal head posture. This can be used as prism trial before doing Kestenbaum surgery for correction of abnormal head posture in nystagmus. In the assessment of binocular single vision, management of fusional convergence and divergence amplitudes is very important and this can be done using prism bar. The patient is made to fix at a target 
for distance or near depending on the distance at which the amplitude is being measured. For checking convergence amplitude, a base or prism is placed in front of one eye in increasing steps and patient reports diplopia. For determining divergence amplitude, base in prism is used. In the presence of abnormal retinal correspondence, an esotropic patient complains of cross diplopia and exotropic patient complains of uncross diplopia after neutralization of the squint with prisms. This can be determined by using a thin red strip of glass on top of the prisms. Now, uh, microtropia can be diagnosed based on a four prism base out test. When prism is placed in front of fixating normal eye, you can see a add adduction movement in eye under prism and corresponding abduction in the fellow eye. There is an immediate correction and the fellow eye adducts back if there is no microtropia. In microtropia, the recorrection movement is absent when prism is placed over the normal eye and no movement happens when prism is placed over the microtropic eye. Prism dissociation test using horizontal or vertical prism can be done to reveal malingering. There are a few tests using prisms which can be used to detect malingering. A four prism base up or down is kept in front of one eye sufficient to pre present diplopia and normal person will complain of diplopia whereas malingerer will deny diplopia in the absence of any binocular vision problem. Another test is using a high value base out prism. When it is placed in front of one eye, it will voluntarily move inside to fuse two images whereas a truly blind eye will not move. A double prism test is in which a base to base double prism is properly aligned in front of the good eye and opaque occluder is placed in front of the malingering blind, blind eye. A horizontal line uh, is shown to the patient in front of the good eye. Normally because of the two base to base uh, aligned prisms the patient will see two lines but a malingering, malingerer in order to prove himself blind will say that he is able to see only one line. Now coming to therapeutic uses of prisms, prisms can be given for temporary wear as clip on spectacle prisms for uh, trial wear before giving final prescription or as Fresnel prisms. They can be incorporated permanently into the glasses by grounding the prisms in the glass of spectacles or by mounting prisms on the spectacles. Now in a case of convergence insufficiency, to increase the or build up the patient's fusional reserve, base out prism exercises are given. But when we prescribe the prisms for a patient with convergence insufficiency, whenever the symptoms persist, we do need to give glasses for near work, especially after the press biopic age group. And those glasses are based in prism glasses. And conversely, for divergence insufficiency, we prescribe base out prism glasses in spectacles or Fresnel prisms. However, most of the cases of divergence insufficiency do need a surgery. Similarly, uh, patients of convergence uh, paralysis base in prism are needed for near work in the prescription and for divergence paralysis, a base out prisms are needed in a prescription. Now in nerve palsies, prisms can be used in long standing cases when the angle of deviation is very small, diplopia is persistent and angle is stable. Usually patients with 6 nerve palsy respond very well to prisms in primary position. Patients with 3rd nerve palsy do not respond well due to gross incompetence. However, if angle of deviation is constant and is small and prisms can be tried to get binocular single vision in primary position. In fourth nerve palsy, with unilateral fourth nerve palsy, prisms can be tried if angle of deviation is stable. They may need two prisms for distance and near and also they may need a vertical as well as horizontal prism in the prescription. Bilateral fourth nerve palsy do not respond very well to 
prisms due to large degree of torsion. However, it may vary from case to case. Prisms are used in binocular single vision exercises to relieve small angle phorias and relieve asthenopic symptoms. Again, a prism adaptation test for 15 to 20 minutes trial can be done to see if patient symptoms are relieved by prisms or not. If angle of deviation is more, then chances are high that prisms may not be of much help. For correcting tropia, surgery is always the preferred treatment. However, due to some reason, if surgery cannot be performed, then prisms can be prescribed temporarily. Rarely, when kids are prescribed a new pair of glasses, kids with anisometropia may complain of diplopia due to difference, difference in the prismatic effect of the two lenses. Usually, kids tolerate anisometropia well. However, if such situation arises, a vertical prism can be incorporated in lower portion of one lens to differentiate vertical prismatic effect and eliminate diplopia. This type of prisms are called a slab off or reverse slab prism. The slab off prism is placed on more minus or less plus lens which works as a base up prism. The reverse slab prism is placed on more plus or less minus lens which acts as a base down prism. Up to 4 to 6 prism diopter of slab off or reverse slab effect can be obtained when needed. In childhood acquired cranial nerve palsies, when the child complains of diplopia and we are waiting for the angle to stabilize before planning further intervention, prisons can be prescribed to maintain binocular single vision and eliminate diplopia in primary position. However, child may not accept it as diplopia still remains in other gazes. Treatment of other underlying cause is essential. Prisms can also be used in improving cosmesis in a blind eye by improving the apparent alignment of, of the blind eye. In homonymous hemianopia, Fresnel prisms can be used to increase the field of vision. Very high prisms are needed for this and could cosmetically be unacceptable to the patient. Also, it is more beneficial in a familiar environment. In a newer surrounding, it creates more confusion to the patient. It can also be used in uh, patients of stroke and patients of retinitis pigmentosa and glaucoma who have a field defect. This is the photograph of uh, Fresnel prisms for uh, hemianopia. Yoke prisms can be used as a mode to treat abnormal head posture in patients with nystagmus. Fresnel prisms are used for this. Again, cosmetic problems and visual dis disturbances as explained earlier can make it unacceptable. Bilateral yoke prisms with base in the direction of head turn can keep the patient's eyes in eccentric null position and decrease head turn. Similarly, patients with ankylosing spondylitis, neck joint stiffness may benefit from prisms. In patients who have a chin down posture, a bilateral equal base up yoke prism can allow improvement in straight ahead vision and thereby facilitate mobility. Thank you.